So, the previous case study that uh, we introduced was a classification uh, case study and as a second case study, we are going to intro introduce a regression or a function approximation case study. Uh, it basically follows the same format as the um, classification case study. So, I am going to quickly um, go through uh, this case study introduction, uh, so that you can see how this case study is solved in Python. So, the, the case study is on predicting the price of uh, pre-owned cars. Uh, so, right uh, at the beginning, uh, we can see that here there is a slight difference uh, between what we saw in the last case study and this. In the last case study, we simply wanted to classify individuals into uh, two possible categories, uh, people who are making less than 50,000 and people who are making uh, more than 50,000. Whereas here, um, what we are looking to do is we are actually trying to see if we can predict the price of pre-owned cars. So, there is just no category, it is a value for a pre-owned car and how do we predict the price of pre-owned cars. So, the problem statement is uh, Storm Motors is an e-commerce company, then they act as mediators between uh, parties interested in selling and buying uh, pre-owned cars and um, they have uh, lots of data based on uh, sales uh, that have happened through them or otherwise and what the interest is in is to make a sale quickly. So, uh, if the price uh, is uh, appropriate and um, um, that is something that you can uh, satisfy both the seller and the buyer, then you will have your cars moving fast. So, what Storm Motors wants to do is they want to develop an algorithm so that they can predict the price of the cars based on various attributes associated with the car. So, you might think of using uh, such a model uh, from a Storm Motors viewpoint in multiple ways. If, if uh, a seller is asking for a price, uh, you could uh, put the attributes of the car that the seller is selling into this model and then come up with the predicted price and if it is much above uh, what it is predicting, then you can tell the seller that you know uh, you're you're asking for too much and you are not likely to sell this car at this price uh, and uh, similarly uh, a buyer uh, comes and bids for a car at a much a lesser price than what has been uh, put up then you could show the results of the model and tell the buyer look you are asking for a uh, very uh, cheap price so it, it, it the a seller is unlikely to give you this car at this price. So, if you got this right, then you could optimize this uh, transaction and then have um, both the parties being happy and then uh, you uh, have a better business. And <clears throat> much like uh, uh, what we saw uh, in the classification problem, uh, again uh, we think about this data in a matrix format. Uh, so, uh, Storm Motors has data for about 50,000 cars uh, in their database uh, that have been uh, sold or that have been processed in one way or another and there are these 19 uh, variables uh, that are associated with this problem. Clearly, uh, one of these variables is going to be uh, the outcome variable or the price of the car and the other variables are variables that we hope have enough information in them, so that we can basically predict the price of the car. And much like uh, in the last uh, example, uh, if we go through these variables, so there is a variable called date crawl and the data type is uh, date. So, this is a variable where uh, once Storm Motors puts the ad out, uh, when did it catch the first eyeball? So, when was the first time? Uh, this ad was uh, crawled uh, and all field values taken from uh, this data. So, that date is the first date crawl. So, it gives you an idea of when people roughly um, started looking at uh, this car. Now, uh, the name uh, is another variable and this is kind of a composite variable. This has been downloaded uh, from uh, some place. So, this is a string variable, but this is a string variable 
um, that could consist of car name, brand, model, etc. So, it is kind of a composite string and in this data set you will see that uh, it is not always consistent in terms of the order in which all of the information uh, comes in. Uh, seller, uh, whether it is a private or a commercial uh, seller, uh, offer type is uh, whether e the buyer uh, has looked at a particular car and then uh, gave an offer saying, okay, this is your price, but I am uh, willing to um, buy, buy this car for this price or uh, it is a price that the seller has asked for. So, that is the other uh, variable that we have. Price is the price uh, on the add to sell the car, which is the outcome uh, variable uh, that we are interested in. And the way these ads are put in, there are certain characteristics of these ads. And as part of this exercise, uh, Storm Motors also had some specific studies that they want to conduct. So, the ads could be of uh, the test type or the uh, control type and the data type is a string. Uh, vehicle type is a string, whether it is a cabrio, SUV, coupe and uh, five more different types of vehicle. Year of registration, uh, year in which it, the car was first registered, which is an integer variable. Now, you can see that um, uh, many of these clearly will have an impact on what price you can sell the car at. Right? Uh, so, for example, vehicle type uh, is an important aspect one would, one would assume and uh, uh, there are more uh, uh, variables that we will see. Uh, seller, for example, private or commercial could have an impact or might not. So, this is something that we might uh, not know. Uh, private uh, sellers might want to hold on. Uh, and get the best price uh, for the car. Uh, sometimes commercial guys might want to move cars out. So, uh, we really do not know how much an impact it will have, but these are all relevant variables. So, whenever you look at a data science problem, uh, you basically look at uh, whether uh, the variables are uh, relevant to the problem and then how relevant and quantitatively how much they impact and so on, only the data will tell you. So, that is post the solution you will be able to understand. Now, uh, going on to more variables, uh, there is a variable called gearbox which is string, uh, it can be manual or automatic, power PS, power of the car, uh, this is an integer and there are uh, multiple uh, values this can take. Uh, model of the car, model type of the car, for example, uh, if it is a Hyundai, uh, is it an i10, i20 and so on. Uh, kilometer number of the kilometer number of kilometers the car has traveled which is an integer variable uh, month of registration fuel type whether it's a petrol car diesel car and five more uh, brand what type of car is it uh, is it a bmw mercedes and many others now we also have another variable which might be important from a price of car viewpoint not repaired damage is a variable name so this is a string if it is yes, uh, then basically what it says is there has been a damage and it is not been repaired, so or not rectified and no means there has been a damage, but the car has been uh, repaired or rectified. So, you can again see how this variable might have an impact in terms of the final price. So, date created another variable of data type date, date at which the ad at Storm Motors was created postal code, postal code of the seller and last seen when the crawler saw this ad last online. So, what has been the most recent activity in terms of interest in terms of this car. Now, you can see in kind of think about this and then say okay, each of these variables could have an impact. For example, the last thing that I talked about, if a car is not getting any eyeballs at all, then you know maybe uh, it is it's, it's not priced right. So, uh, you have to really think about how to price it so that you can sell it. Okay. So, um, based on this uh, information, the variables can be uh, grouped into different buckets, uh, which is something that you can think about um, uh, and say, well, uh, the vehicle specification details such as gearbox, power, fuel type is one group. 
uh, condition of the car and not repaired damage and kilometers another group kilo both of them in some sense tell you how uh, the car is uh, likely to be in in what condition is it likely to be and so on uh, if it's run a large uh, number of uh, kilometers then you know uh, it's a older car so condition might not be uh, great and of course not repaired damage directly gives you information about the condition of the car uh, seller details again uh, which part of uh, the geography the seller comes from and so on. So, those uh, can be grouped under seller details. Uh, registration details, year of registration, month of registration, of course, the car itself, make and model and uh, what is happening based on the advertisements that we have and does that give you any clue in terms of uh, what is likely to the price uh, is another grouping that you can think of. Again, uh, do not want to go through this uh, slide again, uh, we use the same process uh, that we talked about in the classification example, uh, same notions of problem statement very clear here, we want to predict uh, a price of a used car uh, and again uh, since <coughs> uh, it is a very simple straight one problem, you do not ne really need to look at sub problems and so on, it is a function approximation or a regression problem. And much like how we talked about the previous case, again here we are going to run uh, several different models and then find out whichever model does well. Uh, and all of this we are going to again do this uh, using Python. So, that is basically what we have. So, uh, we know that the dependent variable is a numerical uh, variable which is the price of the car that we want to predict and again independent variables have a combination of numerical and categorical variables. Go through uh, pretty much uh, same kind of ideas that we talked about in the classification problem. First look if the data is clean, look for missing values, look for variables that might influence price. So, this is where you do uh, some form of visualization, uh, descriptive statistics and so on. Um, and also in this case, uh, one of the important things is to identify outliers. Um, there are uh, data points which really do not make much sense at all uh, based on whatever logic that we use. So, for example, if there are a lot of data points which say price of car is 0, uh, then you know there might be uh, some issue with that data. So, you want to kind of remove those kinds of data points. Similarly, power of the car, if it is a ridiculously small number, then you know cars do not come at uh, those powers and so on. So, you can remove those. So, that is another important thing that you will see in this case study and uh, how do you uh, think about outliers. Uh, they are very formal um, mathematical ways of thinking about outliers and removing them and there are also more common sense uh, notions of what outliers are and then you can remove these outliers. And also um, if you have certain categories uh, with very uh, little frequency of occurrence, then you can think about uh, whether you can combine two categories uh, into a same category and so on. So, that you have a, a much more uh, compact data set uh, that you can work with. So, as I mentioned before, uh, we can filter data based on logical checks, price, year of registration, power. So, in some cases you will notice in this data set the year of registration does not make sense at all. So, there are years which are past uh, 2019 and there are years uh, which are very far uh, back from 2019. So, uh, you can remove data like that and then get a reduced number of data. And as I mentioned before, uh, we are going to look at two different techniques. One is linear regression, uh, which sees if there is one linear model uh, which will fit the output variable as a function of the input variables. If that is the case, then the model is simple, analysis is simple, variable importance, everything is simple. So, we will first try that and also we will see whether an ensemble method such as a random forest approach will work in this case uh, better than uh, simple linear regression approach and basically it is a trade off in terms of understandability of the model, uh, how much better one model does over the other and so on and 
what you are going to use this model for, are you going to embed this model in some other optimization and so on, in which case you might want to worry about complexity, explainability and all that. Otherwise, uh, if you are just going to use this in this example, if a random forest model does much better, you might simply go ahead and use it for this example. So, uh, you will notice that uh, you will do uh, assumption checks using regression diagnostics, linear regression models come up with come with certain assumptions which once you build a model you can verify whether uh, the model allows us to kind of understand whether this data follows the assumptions uh, that we had uh, laid out at the beginning. You can evaluate performance metrics, in this case the performance metric is very straightforward which is basically how much error is there in your prediction. And if um, uh, you are happy with the result, you simply live with it. If you are not happy with the result, then uh, you might say, well, uh, there might be some other uh, processing of the data I can do and then maybe get better models. Um, maybe one idea would be to better subset data and uh, say I will build separate models for these cars. So, uh, one very simple idea is. Uh, let me group all the cars with uh, very low price and then maybe build a model uh, which I would might call as a, a model for low price cars and then I could subset all the cars with a larger price and then build a model for um, uh, higher price cars and so on. So, these are things that come out of uh, your analysis after you build uh, the first level of data science solution and then understand whether that is good enough or not or you have to do more. Uh, to make your results acceptable uh, for use. So, uh, in the lecture that follows this, you will see how you solve this whole problem uh, in Python and look at these various choices and then see uh, how you give a holistic solution to this problem. Hope um, uh, these case studies are useful uh, in your journey towards understanding data science and in particular using Python to understand data science. And, uh, I just want to say that this is just a beginning, these are simple case studies, nonetheless they are themselves useful case studies for you to understand a process by which you solve these problems and as you go forward, uh, hopefully you will encounter uh, more uh, uh, complex and uh, rich problems that, that you get to solve in this area of data science. Thank you. Mm -hmm.